Um, the next um, session is about the Open Med, Open Course, and we have three presenters, Fabio Nashimbeni, Daniel Villar Anrubia, and Adi Twisi, who, who, will, who will magically all speak within 15 minutes. Thank you, Catherine. Well, we have decided to keep it uh, a little bit more simple, so I'm going to, ma to be making a very uh, brief uh, introduction to the project, and then Ad is going to uh, to talk most of the time, because this is about this presentation in particular is about the perspective from facilitators, and he's the only facilitator <laughs> here. Uh, and also Javiera is with us, and she's an external evaluator, so if, she, if you have any other questions about evaluation, she will be also available to reply. So OpenMed is an Erasmus Plus project as well, and it's about uh, raising awareness and facilitating the adoption of open educational practices in the South Mediterranean region. Uh, in particular, uh, Egypt, Jordan, Morocco, and Palestine. Uh, this is an overview about different things that we have been doing over the last uh, three years. But today we are going to be focusing on this, uh, the capacity building course, which has been a core component, uh, especially being an Erasmus Plus project looking at capacity building uh, for higher education. So an overview of the, mod of the course, it has uh, five modules covering in total 80 hours of work. Uh, it has been translated into three languages. Uh, it has 12 facilitators and 62 participants uh, from five countries. And uh, this is, um, Yes, our learning circles. Um, we have learning circles in all the partner countries and also Lebanon. So in Lebanon, we, we had a, an extra learning circle. And if you want to uh, just take the floor, Adi, and this was our first uh, the facilitator of facilitators training last September in Torino. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so uh, this um, picture was taken back in Torino and uh, as you can see there's a lot of people here. Um, most of them are facilitators who joined uh, that program um, in order to get introduced uh, to um, you know the processes that's going to happen and how are they going to present the, uh, the course online to their learning circles. As we showed in the previous um, slide here, there were 12 facilitators in total and 62 learners differentiated and uh, partitioned in different groups. Uh, we call them uh, learning circles. And they are among the five countries as well. Uh, so um, uh, we, we had in the course, um, as mentioned before, five modules. In each module, we plan to have webinars with people who have impact in open education in different countries. These are some of them, and um, we were humbled to have them in uh, our webinars as well, so that learning, our learning circle would um, you know, understand and uh, get more insight from the outside world and from people who lead organizations in this aspect. Um, now, uh, here are some um, findings that I would like to share with you. When we uh, finished the course and I presented the module, it lasted for about, um, how, was, how, how much was that, six or seven months? And then once it, uh, it was finished, we were running a summative and informative uh, uh, evaluation for the course. As we can see here, here's also a recap for how many, how many facilitators and trainers we have in each country. As you can see that, Five of them have uh, one facilitator against uh, or versus uh, the remaining of the trainees. Um, for, for the uh, remainings, some countries chose to have two facilitators uh, because um, some learners actually wanted to learn more about OER, although though they had the ability to teach online. So where they, they were teachers and instructors at the same place, but they wanted to gain more information and more uh, uh, hands-on experience on what OER are and uh, uh, try to make um, their own, actually. Um, other insights that I would like to share with you is that uh, the impact was expandable, actually. It wasn't also um, 
uh, just narrowed and focused on uh, these universities. We had other partners, a room for other partners that I come from, for example, Damanuri University in Egypt, Yarmouk in Jordan, Helwan University in Egypt as well, and in Morocco, uh, University of Mohammed V uh, in Rabat. So uh, this is actually, um, uh, th that shows that the impact was expandable as well. We wanted to reach as much as possible uh, at the extent of our ability in this uh, project. Okay, and um, here I would like to share some quantitative and qualitative results with you from the evaluation. We see that in, in this evaluation of the Open Mint course, we saw that the over quality of the course was made as good. Uh, most of the people, the, the good represented by green color here, most of uh, the, the learners and facilitators as well thought that it was really good to have this platform in terms of navigation, the level of the students who participated, the learning circle and value of the activities themselves inside. So as we can see here, that was mostly positive in terms of the experience that they had. Facilitators now talked about um, if they learn new techniques on how they uh, uh, they can use in in their teaching and uh, will they be using OER in the future? Take into consideration here that uh, when we are talking about facilitators in the South Mediterranean region, not all of them were previously involved in uh, open uh, as open educators. I would say I had to happen to be one of them, and I'll tell you my story in short. Um, uh, one of the things that I would uh, focus in here, will you adopt the methodology of this course in your practice later on? The majority said yes, and this is actually a positive um, insight that you can get from this result. Now here is the qualitative part, which is I would, uh, something that I would like to focus on. Now, um, myself, I've been involved in this project since day one in my university. I represent Princess Sumaya University. I'm the director of the e-learning center. And uh, my day one in Princess Sumaya was the expert meeting of OpenMed there. <laughs> uh, the vice president came to me and said, hey, I'm gonna introduce you to some people. Their work might be so interesting to you. So let me show you. He introduced me to Daniel and uh, Fabio was there. And afterwards, what is this all about? They said, it's open education. Open education? Can you get education really open? Are you kidding me? So um, that was wh that, that's what was my mindset telling me, is that how can we make education really open? What is OER? You know, I've never heard of it, like a term OER, since uh, it was coined back by UNESCO's forum back in 2002 until now. And then I began to read more about it because I was about to involve in this project. I wanted to learn more how to use uh, OER and involve in my, course, in my courses and my techniques. Um, and I found that there was a problem between applying OER and uh, depending on the country itself. How am I doing at the time? Okay. All right. Um, between um, the policies that are applied in my country, which is Jordan, and other countries in the region, and how to contrast them with the European Union in this uh, project so that I can get benefit from everybody and share and exchange ideas. What I found is that uh, the problem of OER in the closed education systems resides in the very definition of what OER is. OER, openly or freely accessible, openly licensed. Again, freely accessible, openly licensed. When you are being open, you're moving this way. When you want to care about privacy and security of your stuff, you're going to move this way. So that's actually applied in every aspect of higher education in Jordan that they really didn't grasp the idea of OER at the beginning. And I'm talking as a facilitator from one of these countries. Uh, I began to understand OER and the opportunity and the vistas of, um, um, I would say, uh, cooperation that I can open with other universities and how expandable it is. Uh, so I'm really grateful for that. Uh, I'm going to go really quickly through these findings and uh, focus on some of them. For example, facilitator C, I don't know who that is, but I, I agree with them, to make more visual materials and improve the quality of the produced videos as one of the uh, recommendations that they made to, to make the course uh, uh, more Im, um, you know, impactful and uh, more reachable to everyone else. One of the um, notes that we got on the course of the OpenMed is that it has 
uh, a lot of tech textual content, although though I've been involved also in designing the course, I've been there in the beginning, and we try to involve as much as we can from different multimedias and uh, in order to make them understand how OER works, how to use them, reuse them, improve them, and implement them in other places, and also how to use the open licenses. Uh, so um, maybe it was depending on the uh, type of learners in which region are you talking about. Some learners prefer to be more textual, others maybe more visual. There are some people in the middle who are in the mix, you know. Okay, and from the in-depth interviews, I can share many of the readings, um, uh, readiness uh, for uh, OER adoption and um, how to develop that and uh, making the experts in open education appointed to influence um, uh, positions like the director of e-learning centers in each university to be a reactor for OER and a promoter for their learning circle in the, uh, in the future. I would like to mention and uh, reassure that this course was in a pilot phase. All of what I'm showing here is something to be more improved, is something to be translated into three languages, Arabic, um, it's basically in English, but it's going to be uh, translated in Arabic and French. We're still working on that, but for sustainability, we um, are working on having several scenarios where this project is going. Uh, two of most is, and I think that's going to be uh, linked with the, with the main challenges of this project, is that um, we, we would like to have this course also implemented in each university or in each partner so that everybody would get benefit out of it and we are also having the idea and the possibility to also link it with other organizations and extracting it out to different LMS systems. Um, okay. So yeah, that, that was actually uh, explained uh, in my uh, talking before. And uh, the improvement and validation of this course uh, is going to be continuously uh, happening. But what I wanted to say here is that some countries, and I would relate with this with the title of the previous presentation, some countries are open in education, but not open enough. Some other countries or other educational systems are really close. What I see from here, uh, the real value is, is at least to introduce people to this concept. I mean, there's always a, sh a shocking factor, you know, you have to get used to it and uh, see it and get out of your comfort zone and learn something new and keep moving forward. I see that's a big value in this one, learning a new paradigm, relatively new paradigm for, for myself and uh, for many scholars in my country uh, in order to get to it, learn something new and uh, keep moving forward with it. I uh, see there's a lot of potential in this one, and um, thank you so much for listening. I really don't want to keep blah 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 about many things here, but I would also save the last few minutes for any questions that you'd like to ask. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Adi. Yeah. Um, my apologies earlier, I didn't pass the microphone to the questioners, so I'm going to do that this time. And can I see if there are any questions from anyone? Yes. yes. Do you have a mic? You do. Um, hello, thank you very much for this very inter interesting presentation. I would have a question about the learning circles. Um, how did the interaction work between uh, a facilitator and the learning circle, then within the learning circle itself, and then between the learning circles? Okay, good question. So uh, there was uh, an interaction between the learning circles, I would say. Uh, that was uh, back in also Turin week. We gathered them all together and um, they promised to keep on working together maybe uh, to present a project, uh, a final project at the end of the course. Uh, we opened the door for everybody from different circles to talk to each other because that's what really it is about. Um, uh, we wanted to have this international sense in this project. But uh, let me get inside each learning circle. It was uh, a fully online uh, uh, technique. And uh, this is something that I can also relate in terms of uh, the Jordanian regulations, for example. I can talk in behalf of my country. We have something weird that is called the blended learning. It's not really weird, it's weird in Jordan. Um, they, they provided the ability to uh, present the uh, course, any course in any university, with 25% as an online content. 
What about the other 75, uh, the other percentage? Well, you can have them as face to face. Well, that would destroy the whole concept of what MOOC really is. And uh, there were also certain challenges uh, that we faced in terms of uh, the ability uh, for learners to uh, learn through uh, online platforms. We use Sakai uh, as an LMS, and uh, some students or uh, from our learning circles didn't have the technical ability, you know, yet enough to get involved in this course. There were some technical problems in some uh, in some areas of Jordan uh, in terms of internet connectivity and stuff, but we were able to overcome these challenges by addressing each of the learning circles problems before we started the uh, pilot project so that the pilot went through very smoothly. And I think that we've learned a lot uh, even before we started the pilot project because we had to encounter some challenges that we waited long before we faced them. And now with OpenMed, the time has come to, fa to face them and to overcome them. Yeah, so thank you so much for this question. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? It's hard to see. I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Can uh, I just know I Please, one final comment, yeah. yeah. Just to complement uh, uh, something, uh, when we d well, two, two, two interesting things about this course. First, it was developed and designed completely collaborative. So we met all the partners in Madrid for three days and we really worked hard starting from zero. So starting from designing one by one the learning objectives and taking into account the situation in every single country. And it was for sure a learning experience for the South Mediterranean partner, but much more probably from for the Northern partners because, you know, we, we, we tend to consider ourselves experts in, in the course design and instructional design, and there we had really to start from scratch because the situation is very different in every country. And then about the collaboration uh, among the, learnings, the, the learning circles from different countries. So at, at the national level, it's quite easy because people know each other and they were sharing stuff. Um, the, the, the trick we use there is to, to focus on the final project work on every learner. So every learner in this course had to read some, read some stuff, take some modules, uh, run some activities, and then develop a final project work, which uh, in most cases is actually an artifact, an OER, a piece of a course, and so on. And so we, let's say, the, 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 the bet there is to share and to work together then on these, on these projects, not so much in the, in the learning process. Even if, and this was quite surprising to me, the, the forum discussions in the platform were pretty active. So normally we, we tend to be, I mean, I'm not quite skeptical about uh, how adult uh, university professors uh, use their time in, in uh, responding to forum questions, but in this case it worked pretty well, showing again the, the interest, I think. Uh, yeah. Um, Adi, uh, Fabio, and Daniel, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that